think he was listening. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, uh, or afternoon. I'd like to call um, the Finance Committee to order. It's Thursday, February 13th. Um, those of us that are present, and we have everybody's here, Council Kluder, Council Eisen, and myself. Um, the next order on the business is the approval of the minutes. So motion to approve. So moved. Second. Should we approve the minutes now or wait till the, the next meeting? Um, do we have minutes? Or I yeah. assume that we did, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. These are the minutes. Colette went to great length to get those done for okay. you. Uh, we <laughs> appreciate well, I, thought, I thought you had a whole month. <laughs> um, was there a second? There was a second. second. Any, any discussion? I don't know the question was going on. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, and today there's only going to be one item on the agenda, which is really to continue our review of the TIF policy that we started last time. Um, and so I've got a, I had looked at it a little bit more and had a couple additional minor edits. I don't know if you want to stick with the program and go through, lead us through like you did last time where we left off. <coughs> and then, yes. And then we can come back to some of the new items. Okay. Um, I'm, I can see on the, again, I'm confused by what Google and I are having as a relationship. Um, <laughs> I can see it tells me that our last edits were made at our last meeting, which was January 10. Yep. Um, but I am also seeing places where it has not updated those things that were done. So we're going to all work through here together. It's all going to be good. All right. Um, I think the biggest um, nut left to crack, if you will, is that public referendum piece. Yep. And fees. And fees, yes. Yep. Those are the two pieces undone from last time, public referendum and the fee system, whether it's two steps, a non-refundable deposit, or an escrow, or something, some sort of system of covering costs. Yeah. So I've had I've had some some thoughts on on this too. Obviously, I had some last time, um, and I'm, I'm trying to understand the the policy as a whole um, and what we're doing, and when we come back and revisit the the town accounts that get created. From the TIFs, because you know, one one thought would be, um, you know, for any any application that is for an existing TIF where there's already money in the TIF account, that expenses would be paid from the downtown. Well, in this case, the downtown, but it could be a different TIF. Um, if there's a secondary agreement. You know, if there's an, there's there's another application being considered for an existing TIF, so I kind of think that might be a missing piece. But on a larger scale, I think a question that a lot of people have about TIFs is, how is that revenue going to be spent? Who has authority over it, and things like that. And so, um, and that, you know, quite frankly, we we just we're just coming up on this, so it is it's new for us and. Um, uh, is that something that we would want to address in that, or is this just for applications or something we'd want to come back to later? Um, and so, you know, I'll just bring up an example now. We have the WEX credit enhancement mm -hmm. agreement in front of us. Um, we have had, you know, quite a bit of resources expended on that, um, internal and external. It's for an existing TIF. If you look at the current um, TIF in place for that, it does seem appropriate that we could pay for the expenses that we've already incurred for the WEX CEA out of the town town TIF because it's economic development for that TIF. Um, but we haven't really addressed any kind of policy around uh, how to expend the funds once they're created. We're actually speaking the same language uh, today. It so, in terms of the administrative expenses for going through another CEA, I think that would be allowable um, to be covered from TIF revenues, and that's been one of my concerns with this. Uh, is it, it wasn't? It felt like TIFs are a bad thing when they can be a tool that we can use to maximize the revenue that we get from the state. Mm -hmm. uh, they can probably be abused as well. So they're, they're, you want to have some parameters around it, but I think that's a great suggestion. Is, is that? Uh, and I don't know if our current uh, filing 
with DECD is broad enough to cover those? Well, do, the 3% the town projects fund that's, that has been established does lift, list economic development costs can come out of that. So we've, you know, when we were talking about establishing the district, we used as an example, we could pay the operational costs for SEDCO out of that account. Mm -hmm. We can pay for some of our planning and codes work out of that account. So it, as much as it can also be used for larger infrastructure projects, and it can be used for operations within those kind of parameters of, of things that apply to economic development. Now, 3% of the 50000 or something that we've collected in the district is not much right. today. today. But right. if we plan ahead and we know what some of these costs are that we can allocate from planning from SEDCO, then that's a real opportunity for us. Uh, and it's, it's the council that makes the decision about the spending, but it's but kind of you're thinking ahead. Yeah. So it, it's like making the decision today to have the ability in a couple of years to cover those expenses with TIF, for, TIF right. revenue. But do we? I mean, right now, that's kind of off yes, the books, you do. right? You authorize every expenditure. I mean, usually in the aggregate, and then it's up to me to execute. Right. But every authorization, whether it's through budget or separate council action, is authorized by council. I don't have expressed authority other than what's granted to me. And oh, if you right. want to go I back to DECD with an amendment to our existing um, TIF district, we would have to, the council Absolutely. would have to approve that. Yeah, right? that's, yeah. that's all. Right. Uh, to the council. To the issue of fees, though, though that's true, and that may well be what we do because it's an allowed expense, and I think there'll be adequate funds to cover those legal costs for the WEC CEA. I think the point of this is to the extent that it's not, those costs aren't covered otherwise, we could do that. And it would seem to me, to me and I thought the tenor of the conversation was someone's asking for our assistance, the least they can do is cover our costs to get there. Right. So uh, I would recommend, if you're suggesting that we don't need to even deal with fees because we have another way of deal de paying for them, I would no, suggest I it's not I inappropriate yeah. to include no, them No, I here. definitely wasn't. Uh, I didn't do it very well, but I was kind of asking a broader question. Should the policy at some point address the, that, the TIF revenue? Right now, the policy doesn't really mm -hmm. address the TIF revenue. So that was my broader question to it. Um, and so that's that's kind of where I'm at and it it came down to like okay this might be one example where the TIF revenue would be used but mm -hmm. I think the hierarchy is um, for me is what I said last time which is um, you know the uh, the the, uh, the words not coming to me but where you establish an account a retainer a retainer mm -hmm. you establish a retainer um, I'd say 2500 and Know, then it goes to those expenses, and mm -hmm. you sign in the agreement that you would um, cover, you know, up to a certain point, you know, all of the mm -hmm. fees. And I, you know, I think trying to get staff time out of that would be kind of difficult. But that's certainly third anything that we expend third party. Third party. Yeah. To your question or your point uh, regarding whether this policy should get into the details of how municipal TIF revenues are spent. The controlling document will be the TIF document approved by, by DECD. The council, you know, in December of 2018, um, designated 3% and went so far as to say, and that 3% we expect to spend on these handful of items. DEC blessed that because it's within the statute. Um, so that's the controlling document as to how much is retained. There's an administrative process of how we segregate that in a sub-account and it builds. Uh, but in terms of the actual expenditures, it's still controlled by you. And in most cases for, you know, a capital expenditure for traffic improvements or offset SEDCO would be done vis-a-vis -vis the, the budget process. Right. Yeah, yeah, I, I just kind of meant like, like we're not going to bring in front of us a vote, oh, you should be taking that $4,000 for WEX attorney fees out of this. That's why if it was in a policy to say if there's expenses above and beyond, you know, that are related to a TIF, you know, it should come out of that account. That that's just kind of where I was I was thinking yeah. on that. You know what I'm saying? Like right yeah. now, I, you know, I, I just don't see us voting on something like that. Well, I, I, I'm going to insist that you do. When, when I don't have the authority otherwise, I think the council needs to grant it to me. And I appreciate your point, but I think it's far and few between. I, I expect the occurrences where we're spending TIF revenues mm. will be. Yeah, I agree. Decided annually. There'll be some one-offs, and we'll have to deal with them as they right. come. But something that we might want to go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, we might want to consider in the policy is we have a three, you know, three percent. So that's kind of the maximum, without filing for uh, an amendment, yeah. that we can allocate towards uh, those TIF revenue. So let's say that we 
can fund SECO. If there's items on our capital improvement plan that could be funded through TIF revenue, something that we might want to touch on, I guess, in this policy is that it can be a strategy where, it, and the more that we can predetermine where we're going to spend the money, that's the bigger the benefit from the state is in terms of school funding or revenue sharing or county taxes. Um, so mm -hmm. it forces you to be strategic. I don't feel like we're touching on that much with the policy today. Right. Yeah. Well, can I, just as a process suggestion? <laughs> so I think to get to your first question, which is really what we're trying to do, mm -hmm. um, this, what we have in front of us, has been something that's been worked on for the better part of, what, 12 months, Tom? Mm -hmm. Something like mm -hmm. that. Yes. I yeah. mean, it's kind to of two gone, different committees. Two different committees. Mm -hmm. Right. We're, and it's, they blessed it and passed it to us. Mm -hmm. The prior finance committee took a stab at it, and those are some of the edits we're seeing today. The suggestion I might make is maybe try to work within the confines of this document to clean up anything staff has identified. They just want to get clear about okay. where we are. Then I had some things maybe additionally that we might want to address. It sounds like you have some things that you might want to address or add to the policy. Oh, yeah. And you so know, and yeah, coming yeah. in, I was uh, actually going to just let's move this forward to council because so many people yeah. have worked on it. I'm not looking to reinvent the wheel or to yeah. be an obstructionist. Yeah. That's inspired me. To, to, <laughs> yeah, I think well, it can be other. You know, so, yeah. so, so my only <coughs> suggestion is maybe can we put what you two had suggested in kind of a parking lot? And, and mm -hmm. then work through, at least get some answers to the yeah. ones that we've already yeah, identified. Absolutely. Yep. Sorry about that. And then see where we are at the end of the day and see where that moves. I mean, I, right. we, got a, yeah. we got an email from Ken, I'm sure you saw, saying people are really starting to ask, where is the policy? <coughs> right. So yeah. I think. And I, defi so. I definitely have some other things, like after we get through the questions. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So let's, so going back where we started from, I think it's page, I, these don't, mine don't have page numbers on them. So, it's, so there's um, the two big questions left yep, to discuss. And, That's yeah, I'm just trying to get, it's under the developmental program, right? It's under uh, so two if, dot, whatever. You second full stuff. page of text. It's under TIF districts. Under TIF districts? Yes. Okay. Um, what section? That's right here. The, uh, it's like the section two. Keep going. Two pages. Got, actually, it should be, you've got, oh, it's right there. Okay. So it, are you talking the public referendum piece? Yes. So that's where we kind of had the conversation last time, and I think we vectored from the, the summary I thought of where we were. Some thought, I think staff recommended that it's not in there at all. Um, I think the prior finance committee had struggled with maybe trying to mirror something on the charter, saying maybe there's some that shouldn't be in there, but at some threshold it may be something that should go to the public, the public referendum. And with a dollar threshold, and I'm not sure we, I'm just saying where we yeah. ended up. <laughs> I'm not saying, and I think that's where we left it last time and couldn't come to a conclusion. And, so. and staff did request, if, if nothing else, that it come out of the TIF district establishment piece, since that doesn't seem to be the piece that causes um, as CEA. much angst, and move it to, to the, the CEA. CEA. Yeah. Exactly what I was going to say. I, I have no. I can't think of a reason why to form a TIF district, yep, I agree. we would want to go to referendum. Okay. Or I can't think of an example. Uh, if you're going to issue a CEA that's over a certain yep. dollar threshold, then yeah, I, I, that's not, I, I don't think that would be out of the range of reasonableness. Okay. So Betsy, sort of a consensus, are you okay at least? To take it out from here? Take it out of the, of the yeah. TIF and move it I to mean, the CEA. That's, that's, that's part one. Yeah. So if we got to we'll talk about it again at CEA. So, All right. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it out of this section. Yes. And move it over to the CEA. So to, that begs the question as to where. Well, I don't. Um, if I think that what I'm hearing is that it would be going into the um, to, to, to section yeah, five step application step. process. It's probably after step seven. Well, can we leave it to you guys to place it in the appropriate place, and then we can have the conversation about, I think I heard John sort of say he was comfortable of having it there in some threshold for a public referendum. I think I'd be in the same place. Uh, sure. I think that it go. I agree with Tom wholeheartedly. It goes in after questions, after section seven. So it's going to be brought to council step, for approval. Step seven, excuse. Right, sorry. 
So, so step says and says, final TIF CEA proposal brought to council for approval using a full public process, including a first reading, a public hearing, and a second reading prior to the final vote. At the town council's discretion, the public hearing and final action may occur at the same meeting as the second reading. I think the change there goes to a second reading prior to a final vote, and then there needs to be language that says that that final vote is either to approve the CEA if it is under X dollars, yes. or to the final vote is to move it to public referendum if it is over X number yes. of dollars. The only uh, caution I would put there is that I think you need to leave some room for discretion, because there is room for discretion, right? The, the town council can overrule policy, but they don't have to follow the policy. So I, I think you might phrase it as, as recommended if it's over a certain threshold that the council forward this to referendum, to the voters for referendum. I guess I, I'd soften the language maybe a little bit. But that doesn't, I, again, if we go back to the charter, the charter doesn't have soft language there, does it? Around. Well, if you want to put it in the charter, then it's binding. No, 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 I know. But but the intent of the charter, it, it, it is not a town council decision. It is, right. if it's a threshold, it is a public referendum. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I think there's there's two choices. You're right that we can say recommended. Oh, so you're saying if it's, well, it's not a capital improvement, so the charter doesn't really attach. No, no, it doesn't. I, I'm just saying, for now, do we want to kind of one option would be to mirror the intent of the charter, which was to say at a certain. I mean, I think the intent of the charter was that at a certain dollar threshold. Those that drafted the charter at a point in time said they think the public should have a say. And yes, no, it's not a capital project, <coughs> but it still it still represents a long term liability to the town, like a capital project. So I mean I don't I'm not suggesting this is a charter issue. I'm just suggesting that we have two pathways and trying to get both of you to weigh in on. I guess one pathway we said it does go to public referendum over a certain amount. That I heard that for me, and I'm hearing from you. Then it could be recommended to go to referendum. Yeah, I guess my only point there is that this policy can't bind a town council to send something to referendum. Right. So I think then I wouldn't put recommended in the policy if they want to change the policy and override it, a future council could do that. So, yeah, they could just choose not to follow it. Right, they could just choose not to follow it. So I think there's no reason not to spell out what the, the uh, what I mean, obviously the rest of the town council will weigh in on it as well when we get to that point. So if we have numbers in it, um, they'll either look at it and, you know, someone might move to amend it and strike it um, and we'll, you know, argue it. But, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely for, uh, you know, over a certain amount and a certain length of time that it would go to the voters because, I think, you know, these these uh, you know what I've come to learn is that these 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 CEAs and these ag private agreements are even more consequential in a lot of ways than bonds, and we commit ourselves to bonds, um, but through the charter, people weigh in on the bonds. Now that doesn't mean that um, people aren't still paying the bonds in 30 years. People who are not even living in the town anymore made that decision for people that now live in the town. But I think having the extra uh, input from the people of the town on something so consequential that ties up the town, or commits the town, not ties up, but commits the town to such you know, an extensive legal agreement, not just monetarily, but time. And even there's questions around zoning and um, things like that that actually come into play. The agreements are very consequential. I see um, over a certain dollar amount. And I hesitate to say one because, you know, we're going to have to come up with one if we put the language in. Um, but it, it feels kind of random to me right now. And a, and a certain time amount, then I would want to send them to referendum. The, the, the complicating factor is these are the dollar amounts an estimate, right? So if no development happens, I'll, I'll take the doubts as an mm -hmm. example. If no development happens there, the amount's zero. So going in, you estimate what the potential, and we set it a maximum, but there's no minimum. So how do you, what are you going to base your dollar amount on? And I, I was thinking, you know, maybe you could express it as, I hate that the 400,000 was come up with 20 years ago and there's been no accounting for inflation and okay. you know, I, I, costs yeah. go up. Right. Yeah. So maybe you express it as a percentage, and I don't know what the right percentage is of the prior year's budget. Or, and that's just an example. It could be something like that, something that will move over time with inflation. 
But then the second complicating factor is where are you going to come up with that number? Because you could be encouraging them to underestimate the increased assessed value that could possibly come out of the development. Yeah. I just have, I'm not clear on that. That's all. Mm -hmm. okay. Very good points. So I guess the place I would be on the second piece of your question about how do you right, index it somehow? Yeah, I, yeah, I totally yeah. agree that yeah. it should it should move over time. So that that piece is fine. The the first part about getting value, I mean, I think it's it's you know, I mean, it's sort of how we. I mean, we're reporting out what we think the value of when we did the Scarborough Down CEA. Yeah. It's your best, you know. Staff will do. Sedco will run some modeling. That's what we seem to be hanging our hats on as being the the facts that yeah. we agree on. So I think that is a is a way to determine the value of it or the upside value of it. So I think we've got a way to index, you know, what the value might be. Yeah. Now we just need to have a cut point of where we want to be. I think it's you're suggesting a percent of, you know, if we go off the. I mean, does anybody have any number you want to put forth that that, you know, we don't want? Yeah, it, Larissa, go ahead. Nope. Sure. Any suggestion? Well, so I always make things complicated, but um, I mean, one of the things I'm, look, I'm looking at, you know, trying to, and John and I have discussed is, you know, any TIF that would even, I mean, any CEA that would even get this far, right? It, it would have to have a lot of criteria. Maybe we want to put the criteria there for the referendum that has gone through, made it through all of these, these steps. I, you know, it's, um, I mean, we, we've got to put something in like a point system and, you know, something to, to gauge these things or else the way the policy is written now, no offense, I know the work was done, but oh, no. it's pretty much like, okay, just apply, you know, <laughs> like the well, only real criteria is does it meet the long, long term comprehensive plan? So, I mean, I think we need more criteria than that to, even get through all of these steps and then maybe the last step is the referendum and we trust the process that it's bringing significant um, projects in front of the council. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you and that was one of my points I wanted to bring up after we had done this part is, is our criteria adequate? But let's, let's assume for now we'll have the right criteria. All we're trying to figure out is a cut point to say if it's going to go to referendum and I think Larissa, you do you have some suggestion or thought? I have an, I do have a suggestion for consideration. Yep. What if instead of a dollar figure, yep. what if it were a percentage, like if, if the credit enhancement agreement was for a um, more than X percent of the total tax dollars to be generated, it went to referendum. Same so that's not a battle. So that Hopefully, way. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to track with you. So, so instead of, again. instead of, because we, it's really challenging, I think, to um, pit different project sizes against one another. So if you have a threshold dollar amount for a credit enhancement agreement, your smaller projects are just by default more, in, um, rather they are actually bringing in better economic development for us or are a better fit for our community, they are not subject to the same review as a larger project just because of the dollar cap that you'd be putting on. So by considering instead that, let's say, um, if the credit enhancement agreement require, uh, is calls for greater than I'm going to just toss out 50% of the total tax dollars to be generated to be returned to the to the developer, then that triggers the referendum. So it's not a dollar figure, it's a percentage of the tax dollars generated. That scenario, theoretically, could have very small amounts going to referendum. Yeah. Right. You could Relatively still. inconsequential amounts. If it's yeah. simply percentage-based. Right, right. Uh, you know, a small project could be tens of thousands of dollars as opposed to yeah. t tens of millions of dollars. Sure, I, I think that they both ways have challenges as far as as small projects not going. What's the smallest CEA that you can see us entertaining? Uh, the this BOR one that we have in place um, oh, returns about three hundred thousand dollars to them over the term. Which one? Who is it? It's uh, it's the little Conica building on Route One. Okay. Uh, yeah. And just let me give you the the example of how that came to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a small project. There were some unique. Um, infrastructure costs, uh, that's the area of Route 1, the spur takes off, yeah. it's the first building that you see, yeah. it's mm -hmm. been renovated in the last 10 years. 
that came online in 08, 09, at the depth of the recession, there was, the crickets were chirping in town, there was nothing going on. And so the council at the time was delighted to have someone that was willing to stick their neck out and to do something that no one else was doing and yeah. renovate a downtrodden yeah. building with some infrastructure challenges. And so that unique set of circumstances in that point in time, it made perfect sense. Eight corners situation there that needs some so potential development. I, that's my overriding concern with all of this is that we can't predict the future mm -hmm. and we can't predict the next deal that's coming. We, we know what's happened and I'm just fearful that uh, you know when you start to put um, guardrails around this, something's going to get lost and it's either going to set yourselves up for violating your own policy, which is not a comfortable thing I encourage you to do, or to freeze out uh, good ideas for coming forward and at least giving, being given a, a consideration. I, I guess the final comment I'd make on the referendum, I think that that will have an incredibly chilling effect and it may even discourage any applications, some applications from coming forward given kind of the unknown on the back end. Uh, it's challenging enough working with private developers to lay out a two or three month process with the town council, much less that process plus some unknown beyond that. So if you're gonna entertain this, and I honestly don't recommend you do, I think you ought to bind yourselves to some expectation of timeline that you'll put it out to voters within 90 days of some such. Mm. So there's, you know, the business community works on knowns or, or the reality, uh, predictability, I should mm -hmm. say. So the more predictability you can introduce here, I think the better better off everyone's going to be. It's still potentially going to be a six-month process, probably yeah. in the quickest of times. Yeah, but even but even the CAAs we've worked on have been about that, right, in our current process? They don't have to be, but they well, are. Yep, they, but they are. Right? Yeah, I mean, state law requires <coughs> public hearing and a vote, period. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying it's right, but that's as simple as the state law requirement is. To John, uh, Councillor Clucci's question. John's fine. Uh, the development project creating protected taxable increased value from nive development of greater than $2 million. So there you have a minimum threshold to, for the process. So the, the smallest credit enhancement agreement would be 100% return on, well, I'm sorry, the, <coughs> that you have to have a $2 million increase in value to even trigger this process. So whatever percentage of that was agreed on. Approved. Proposed. I'm sorry. Uh, John had asked what was the smallest credit enhancement agreement we could imagine with this policy. And it would be based on this, the minimum amount of, of incremental value, which is $2 million. So, so the total created value minimum would be $2 million. Right. And then your credit enhancement agreement would be some sort of so return percentage. of taxes paid on that minimum oh, of $2 million. So then we wouldn't even be considering the <coughs> Conica building under this. Is that what you're saying? Um, I don't recall the created value. I, I do recall that the, the amount of uh, reimbursement over the term was something in the order of three hundred thousand okay. dollars. I, I yeah. don't remember all the yeah. pieces to it, but it was relatively small in the scheme of things, certainly compared to some of the ones we've recently dealt with. And I can't do the math in my head, but uh, fifteen or fourteen seventy mill rate times two million of value, you're talking pretty small dollars. Of taxes. I'm talking about twenty grand in taxes a year or something. How much? Yeah. 25 grand in taxes or something like that on that building? Yeah, that, that would be a small, that would be too small to, for me to send to referendum. If you're yeah, only giving away 50% of that. Right, so so maybe we just, you know, I hear you, Tom, but I, but I think, you know, I guess the rest of your suggestion about our percentage, I mean, the problem becomes, you know, if you just take Scarborough Downs that we did at $83 million, that is a big number that it would have been an interesting if we'd done surveys or other things and taken it to the community to see what the answer would be. I'm not certain what the answer would have been, have been on that. Um, much like everything in this town, it seems like it's pretty evenly divided, and so I'm not sure. I think it should go to a referendum. I think we should come up with some. How about 80 million? What? How about 80, 80, 80 million is that the cut point? <laughs> it, it, it sets the point, anyways. I think <laughs> 10, 10, <laughs> that you, that 10 million it's not in 20 years. That, yeah. uh, that, that one maybe should have had some more community. Yeah. So um, that's response. And that kind of makes that explicitly. Remember, the fundamental of this conversation is that these are this is value that doesn't exist, and arguably, but for this relationship, it won't exist. And so, there's a in my mind, there's a real difference, um, and I think it's a it's a point of great confusion in the community for, for folks that are just casually, you know, ducking into these issues and, and not studying them. It's it's an understandable 
uh, a difficult thing for them to understand. So, uh, Peter, I listened intently to your point about the intent of the charter around approval of expenditures. Um, well, these are expenditures. I mean, but they it's, aren't. It's, well, they are. It, it's money that taxpayers otherwise, you're assuming, and there's been tons of literature out there, it's really unclear that when you do these TIFs and CEAs, are you really creating totally new economic development in a community? Chicago has done this, and, it, and there's some studies that show you don't necessarily create new economic development. You may change where it happens. And how quick it happens and, and what happens. Maybe how quick, but you don't. So anyway, I mean, I just think, I think we'd be a lot better off as a community to have them have ability to have some say at some cut point. So I think, mm. and again, this I has to get through the yeah. full council. So yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, the chances are that there's going to be further dialogue. I'm just remembering, I think it was the charge to the ad hoc community services committee, uh, community service, uh, center. community center building. Uh, I proposed a draft and the council, they went to council and it was a lengthy meeting as I recall. Uh, it was, you know, editing by committee uh, in public session. I'm envisioning well, it could a be. difficult conversation when this goes to council. It, it could be, and, and that's... And maybe that's okay. But, but, you know, I think maybe our, our task might be to move it forward in that spirit, saying this yeah. was, we struggled with it. Here's a thought, here's sort of a, a, a straw. I don't know who's seen this at this point, six have seen. I don't uh, know that Ken has. I think everybody else has been on a... Well, I don't Different. know, Jean Marie, yeah, Jean Marie, I think had an ordinance. So I, it, no, it was, no, it was it's Jean Marie and Ken are the two counselors that have not sat on a committee to work through this. Yeah. Okay. So, so in some ways, I hear you. I, I hear you. Yeah. I think we had a consensus that maybe we put some placeholder in there for now. It may be. Our peers may decide that's not a great idea. So, I mean, I think we decided to move it to the CA section. We decided to move it um, to some threshold. Does anybody have any thoughts about We've got a couple different suggestions. I think. 10 million, 20 years. Term, 20 years. If it's more than 20 years, if it's more than 10 million, it goes to referendum. Either or, or both. I... Uh, both. Okay. So, so, so a question. I'll let Ms. Test view. So the WEC CA. You said we're just throwing this out here. Well, I no, 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 no. <laughs> the WEC CA would not go. Would not go. Correct. That is correct. By either measure. By either measure. Right. Correct. That's correct. Which, I know, is surprising from me yeah. since I'm not for it, but. You know, I don't think everything can or should go. All so. Right, so we got we got twenty and ten. Ten million and twenty years. Yeah. I would probably err higher, but I don't think that's unreasonable either. So what is that? Two million a year? It's a, a, about where I think our authorization should be uh, as a council. That's in line with that. Um, it, and again, the $10 million in your scenario would be the total amount that is projected to be reimbursed over the term. Yes. Okay, so it's actually a half million a year. Yeah. I go 2020, I think. We're, we're, yeah, I guess I'd be a little higher. I'm not trying to And I'd be a whole lot more. Okay, lower. All right. So, <laughs> so we're I would say as a placeholder, um, I, I would probably go... 20 years and five. But I'm okay. I mean, as a placeholder, holy, you'd go higher. Yeah. She's thrown something out. So as a placeholder for now, I would suggest maybe. Discussion point. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm fine with seating that. This is the language that I've written, drafted. The final vote shall either be for approval of the CEA to, or to move the CEA to referendum for voter approval if the terms of the CEA are for greater than $10 million to be reimbursed in total and for greater than, and greater than over 20 years. That's up at the end. Method. But is that generally Greater sense? Than a twenty-year term. I think it's is no. it an or no, there or an and. And is the no. what was proposed. So it, it, if it was a nineteen-year term, you wouldn't do it. So it's ten million in nineteen years. Correct. Mm -hmm. You want to. That's the starting spot. I, fair. Right. I, okay. I, that, that's actually not so bad. Yeah. That gives that allows for some flexibility, anyways. Okay. Go change it. <laughs> yeah, just I, I don't think every little thing should 
go to referendum, you know, but I think ones that really tie up the town for a long time for a significant amount of money should go for a referendum. You guys are both okay with that? <laughs> hey, my yeah. only concern, my only concern is when you do these things, what will happen is we'll have a 19 year. That's true. So, so we get rid of the year if we just do 10 million. No, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Remember, the, the, these are not a right. This is a privilege. So you can say no. I mean, it doesn't get to this point if you don't want it to. No, yeah. I, I, think, I think what we're trying to put in place, Tom, is that you know, the, the composition of the council changes, as you know. Mm. <laughs> it swings. I've been reminded of that. <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure you've seen it. <laughs> so uh, at some point, you may have a council that is all for it, and the sure. public may be really up in arms. And there's really no recourse for them. I think what we're trying to put in place is, it, to get to your point, if it's a really smoking good deal, yep. we should be able to convince the public that it's a smoking good deal. So I think we just want a check-in point so the public feels like so. So you're at 10 million with no, yeah, no years in there. Yeah, I can go with that. Does anybody know what our gross budget was last year? 70. Oh, including no, schools. No. Uh, uh, yeah, including. gross. We had 100 yet. It's, it's at, yeah, it's close. Yeah. It's so right at 100. Is 10 percent reasonable? 10 percent of the prior year gross budget, if it exceeds, but just so that it will move with time. Yeah, and I, I would just like to say, I'm going to think about this amount a sure. whole lot more. So sure. if I come back to another meeting and contradict myself, I don't <coughs> like just throwing an amount out. Yep. I do like it to have some basis in reality. So I kind of like where you're headed with that. But Peter, to your point of uh, trying to Gross budget? protect against yeah. the future, so to speak, you know, policies and ordinances can be changed. They're fully okay. within authority of council. So sure. the only way to lock put that in the lockbox is the charter, and even that has a process to be right. undone. Right. But but it's much more complicated and involves the voters. So, um. I think a policy would at least allow, um, you know, future councils to have the public weigh in to say, "Hey, we're gonna this this was a disaster. It didn't work. We're gonna change this, remove this." But then the, the public still gets to weigh in on the policy itself. So through the public meetings and things like that, as we enact things. So. I think I heard two counselors suggest that they were comfortable with 10% of the prior year's gross budget, but I have not heard weighing in from a third. Well, yeah. I've heard from two. I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Two, I mean, I, I was going with a two out of three. It's a no term. <laughs> it's, right. a, it's a. So it now reads the final vote shall be either for approval of the CEA or to move the CEA to referendum for voter approval if the terms of the CEA are for greater than 10% of the prior year's gross budget to be reimbursed in total. What was the language? Will recommend or it will go to. I think the we, final vote shall be for I, be either for approval of the credit enhancement agreement or to move the credit enhancement agreement to referendum voter approval. So I think that that's it. Read it, sh, it. I think the the meaning of it is shall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you good. Should the option of doing it yourself or sending it out. I well, think he was looking to yeah, bind that's not to send what we're out. Trying to do right. It's bind. He wants to bind to send out if the terms are greater than that ten percent. Yeah, that's the intent. That's that's what. I'm sorry, that's what that does. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In the event those thresholds are met, then it goes to referendum. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. For now, so we could for that. voter approval if the terms of the final vote shall be either. Yeah, it's it's close. It's pretty good. Yeah. Because yeah. the council would still have to act to put it on a ballot, so that's why the the final act. Would Either it contemplates council oh. action, just different types of council action. And, but we didn't put the within 90 days. Did anybody have yeah. a problem with that? Yeah. Which uh, might mean calling a special election or some be cost. Right. I'm okay with that. But within 90 days. Or do you want to put like what's in the next, like election. the charter language, or the next municipal or scheduled yeah. municipal? I'm just concerned election. with timing. It could be six months. Just you know the way uh, timing of an application and. But if if, if, if if the language is the next scheduled, then the town council would have the ability to schedule a special election, right, if they wanted to do it? They could. I'm just uh, putting uh, the, uh, the hat on of the developer, having some certainty that they know it will be at least within a certain time frame might be of value. But there's complication and cost associated with special elections, too. And there's discretion for when something comes to us to yeah. get through these seven steps as well. 
so we could time it. So I, I would be fine with the. Okay. What were you saying? Ninety days, thirty days. I, I was just throwing. I don't really have a recommendation. I just. Uh, I want to be in a position of, um, of at least not discouraging ideas from coming forward. And I, so I, my concern was that there would be just a chilling effect with this open-endedness on the backside. But if there's enough money on the table, I'm sure they'll still. So I mean, I, I mean, this is sort of a, you know, this is a, I mean, this is a living and breathing document. If it's not working, we can we can change it. Okay. And I'm sure our our, our peers will have some suggestions, which is oh, yes. part of the purpose. All right. So that was the one. Item that was that one and then of the two. What, that the was second outside. one is this question of um, whether there's a retainer that's put in at the beginning, or whether, as it's written now, there continues to be a two-part um, fee system. So, at the moment, the way that this is written is that um, there is a, a there's a, a, a non-refundable application fee that comes in with the initial application to. Um, SEDCO and, and the staff. And then at the time of final application submission, which I can't remember which step it is, but it's step, I think, three? Is it what we were looking last time? Preliminary is three. Oh, right. Step five is where the final application takes place, that that's when there's this larger application fee that is to be used to cover legal costs and so forth. Right. So so currently, there's a two-tiered yep. process, yep. Um, and last meeting's comments were that um, steps three and four may incur some staff costs, and does it make sense to have then that larger payment instead of broken into two? Does it make sense to have a larger retainer place put in place at step three um, to be used to cover any costs that come forward? So right now, that first step, the non-refundable <coughs> application fee is 250, right? As this reads, well, staff we had recommended that amount. 250, and then the the final application was the 1500. I think that the bigger concern, a concern, was the 1500. Was that large enough to cover the incurred cost after that point? And I think that's where we thought that that wasn't large enough. Um, yes, to me it's a retainer of 1500 and then we already have the language in there, any funds not right. will be returned, and then just add language, any additional costs will be at the expense of the applicant, will be billed to the applicant. Yeah, the, the concern is that we just have enough money to cover the true costs. Right, the true costs. Yeah. Is this a zip code accurate? Do we have an 0407 out? Yes. Yeah, so it would be a retainer instead of a deposit. I, the two fifty for the application fee. I don't know. I wouldn't do it, but that's, it's okay. Yeah, but you wouldn't. What do you mean you wouldn't do it? No. I just not have any application fee. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, that's in part what the purpose Setco serves to help support the business community. So that's part of their charge and mandate. So I think some level of assistance is. Be expected right why did staff recommend 250 was a thought karen actually agrees with councillor gleistein she would prefer there not to be any application fee but we had heard from um prior committees that they wanted to have an application fee and so if so uh staff suggested 250 as that was the lowest that we could see reasonable to to go with i'm i, I mean i'm okay I'm to go fine with that, but. Uh, so here's the thing if you you create an expectation where i paid my 250 dollars i now deserve the seat at the table with you, Karen, and you should be working with me. And I don't necessarily think that's the way this stuff works or should work. Uh, I'm okay with the fee at the tail end before it goes to council, and I think I'm okay with the amount, which you have 25. This is a significant thing. Uh, so yeah, I'm okay with that piece yeah. if it's got into that side. To me, it's for, I just want the, all the costs for a retainer. Like right now, Wex is a billion dollar company. There's just Zero reason the town should be stuck with a four thousand, five thousand, six thousand dollar attorney bill. Zero. So, to me, just making sure we cover all the costs of these applications is an important thing to me. The two fifty, do it, don't do it. I'm, I'm okay either way. Okay, so it sounds like with the two fifty, you both are okay with it being waived. So, part one, you can. 
and then the, then the, the second step, the final application fee and deposit of 1500 would be made into the fund. Any funds not used during that time will be turned when the project is complete. What if it's over that amount? Yeah, so we could add language, right. something like the applicant shall replenish said Reimburse retainer um, right. or, or is you know, responsible for all related costs. Just all to make it clear that that's the yep. expectation. Okay, that's yeah. Right, we're just agreeing to like third party costs, right? Not, we're not trying to cover staff and internal costs, right? So this would just be if we had to hire a contractor for something or an engineer legal. or legal. Yeah. Yep. Related third party costs. Is there a way to clarify that without being too detailed in here? Well, reimbursable expenses or any incurred costs, town incurred costs? Third party, I guess, yeah. You yeah, said third party, party incurred go. costs. That should be sufficient. You know, by the time I would, I dare say that someone's ready to make final application, Karen or someone like her, some, or me, someone like me, will have scrubbed it, and it should not go forward if, if, if it's not in the best interest of the town. I mean, this has never been about, it's got to, it's got to always be in our best interest for us to even to entertain these ideas. So, uh, yes, there's a, a collateral benefit that's obvious to the developer. To the applicant, mm -hmm. but we shouldn't be doing any of these unless it's in our best interest first and foremost. Yeah, but I think to Betsy's point, if in wax could be a great example of that, if, if we think it makes a whole lot of sense, but then we incur five to eight thousand dollars in legal fees just to work through the particulars, that should be on the applicant, not not the town. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think I think the language yeah. you've added covers that, right? Do you think WEX would have applied? I don't know. This is more of a, a situation of us trying to participating in a competitive process to entice them to come. I wonder what they just they just announced their 2020 earnings is going to be 440 million dollars. I would think there's a good reason for that. Mm. Well, and I would think you know maybe the developers they work with put the retainer in. Knows, you know. All right, so let's at least at least we have the big questions have been mm -hmm. solved. Yep. Big questions have been solved. Now so, let's bring up more big questions. <laughs> so I I had a couple couple things, and I know Johnny and that's both of you want to circle back to what we we're talking about. Um, please some additional language in there. So well, um, we can bring it up. No. I don't know what the right thing to do. Okay. So for just for some detailed question, I had just a couple clarifying points. One, do we, as this is drafted, I couldn't tell, does it this exclude residential going forward? Nope. So we talked to, I mean, the, the state <coughs> excludes exclusively residential projects. Exclusively. Yeah. Any, any project eligible for economic development tip, which this policy applies to, must have at least 20% commercial component of their project. So 100% residential is not, doesn't qualify by statute. But the Beacon is a commercial project. So that's where the distinction, any, any uh, development with more than five units, I think, is considered commercial. So yes, this can be used for purely apartment complex. Not that do, we recommend it, but it's... But do we want that, or do we want... <clears throat> so that was the question. Do we want to be more specific about what... If this is for economic development, should it be more commercial-related activities than residential? I mean, I would err with sticking with what the state guidelines are, and you can decide not to... Whoever's in these seats or those seats can decide not to do it. I don't think... Scarborough's a town that would really have a need for do for for doing a CA for purely residential. Yep. Well, yeah, for for <coughs> multifamily development, and, unless it's affordable, which it gets you into a whole different tiff. That doesn't. This was actually a point that kind of confused me because I was looking at this. I'm like, no, that's not right. That's not right. And then uh, the heading is. Uh, Oh, wait, this is policy and process for tax increment financing districts. Okay, so yeah, this, it, it's you know, supposed to have the words economic development. Yeah, it, it used to. It does. It <coughs> um, which is just one type of tip. 
And there's a lot of other types of tests. But where I, I guess I'm a little conflicted is that we, or I, think that there's a need for more, uh, not technically affordable housing, but workforce housing, uh, where uh, teachers and you know, people who work for the police and fire department can afford to live. And that's not quite the same threshold as the, you know, the fully subsidized affordable. Yeah. So there might be a, an application for using a CDA or something like that to help make that a viable project. So I guess I'm back to, I, I would stick with the state guidelines. I wouldn't rule it out. That's any thoughts? I, yeah, I'm definitely not for CEAs for housing. So it's just, just as counter to what you're trying to accomplish. I mean, what did we hear from the public who got up? You know, we've got to change that commercial mix. We've got to change that commercial mix. So um, just, I'm, oh, I don't support it. Use the beacon as an example. We've had the occasion to study it pretty deeply, although it was part of an existing credit enhancement agreement that was not granted for that project on its own. It was already part of something. It just kind of moved into it. But isolating that, that's roughly a $50 million value at the at build out. Um, they provide for all of their needs, solid waste, plowing. I mean, there's, there's no town services just by virtue of how they're, you know, have set themselves up. We have a pretty good sense of uh, contributions to the schools, which seem, given their size, are fairly modest. Mm -hmm. So the ROI on that project, because of what it is, where it is, its price point, number of bedrooms, makes sense, arguably, from a financial point of view. Another project could you know, be a loser, financially, or you know, demand uh, high cost to serve. So the value of you know, relying on state statute to say what qualifies and what doesn't, I think, has some wisdom. Ease and wisdom, I suppose. Well, it keeps the doors open. So I, I'm a door open guy. Uh, so the, ta the, the state was what, 20 percent? It has to be at least 20 percent commercial. Correct. Is there, is there any appetite for? I know your yeah. your state guidelines, but Betsy's zero. Any appetite to move the 20 to 40? If, if our goal is to get to 40 percent overall, the you know 60-40 ratio, do we make it a little tougher? Well, I don't think you're making it any tougher there because a, uh, a multifamily complex is considered commercial. You'd have to be more well, specific in the way. You... Yeah, yeah, that's countered on the commercial side of our tax base, so to speak. How does how does how does the state statute consider multifamily? Do they consider it commercial? Do they in that definition? I think they, they would. I think they would. I haven't asked the question, but I, I think they would. In that instance, it's part of a larger project that has a retail component. So, I, I, yeah, I, I'm sure they did. It, would, it qualified. I, we did ask that question. So it, the state considers that type of project um, as commercial. But where are you thinking specifically of the language? I'm trying to. Oh, this would be this. This would be. This would be a whole new piece to add to the policy. Um, it's not in there right now. Oh, okay. So we cover new pieces. Well, that was a new piece. The others. Yeah. So we can table that for a second. Um, the other one I had just under terms. It says agreement should typically extend one to twenty years. Should we just strike typically and just say? I mean, a lot of the stuff I've read saying going out 30 years just doesn't make a whole lot of sense for the language. So I guess I'm asking if there's acceptance. You know the CEA? Oh, this, is, this is a TIF. Back to the TIF, I think. So the TIF, I would encourage. So it says 30 years? It's under CEA. CEA, I Oh, yes, it is under. It's under Credit CEA, yeah. yeah. I think TIF so is just max strike. of 30 by state law. So that could stay, but yeah, I would strike typically. Tip, extend between one and twenty. Well, and then why do we have twenty percent to hundred percent? Because we can do less than twenty percent. Right. That... Yeah. But why are we mandating the amount to get? Right. Flex would be bigger. Well, there's seventeen point nine on average. So. In the first year, yeah. Right, so we'd be giving them 20, yeah. Them <laughs> yeah right. 
So yeah, so you, are you, one, are we comfortable striking typically? We just said agreement should extend between one and 20 years. And then you're suggesting striking the 20 to 100% of the? Up to 100%. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I don't know that you do. I'm fine with striking typically because I don't think it adds anything to that sentence. It says the same thing actually now. Do you want to make an affirmative statement? I'm, I'm not saying you should, but um, the word should is leave some discretion. Oh, that's as opposed true. to shall. Yeah. Yeah. Shall. I mean, I'm just trying I'm to understand what should, your I know, I'm trying to understand point. what your expectation yeah. is. Yeah. Agreement shall extend yeah. between one and twenty yeah. years and up to one hundred percent of the incremental value can be captured depending on the merits of the Second question I had was right after that. The next bullet reads: terms may identify specific reimbursable activities. And one suggestion would be that it said terms that must identify specific reimbursable activities, so it's clear what what are reimbursable and what are. Can you read that? Sort of. Wow. I'm trying to think through that. So. Why would we, yeah. A reimbursable activity versus, uh, so that's something that we, instead of stipulating a percentage, we would say you give us receipts for building a road and we'll pay you back for that. Is that something that we would ever even? It could be that complicated. I, I shudder at the thought of that level of administration, but it could be that level of detail. Yeah, because you don't know that up front, right? That's a huge unknown because it might, you know, the road might not be built for 20 years. Well, I guess I guess the way I was trying to read it, it, the way it read, terms. If we are going to put terms in there that talk about reimbursable expenses, it seems like we should define what those expenses are. This just says we may identify what those are. It doesn't say that we will. Yeah, I think that I think the reason it says may here though is that it would be the exception to try to put reimbursable activities. It could be a performance bonus or something, I guess, but the second part of the sentence, I think, is important. Um, where the performance, there could be performance measures. There shall be. There shall be, yeah, it's kind of strong there. Yeah, we buried the lead there. That's the, that's the real meat of that requirement. Shall have performance measures. That's a, a hugely important construct of the CEA. That was part of the initial draft, and I think staff feel strongly that that's an important part of this. The, the second part, yeah, I'm not <clears throat> suggesting change the second part, but how, if there are going to be, to me, there's two different things, right? There's performance, it shall have performance measures, but it also sounds like there are going to be specific, there's potentially going to be specific reimbursable activities which, which are not defined. Mm -hmm. So that leaves it open ended. Shouldn't we want to say in the terms of a document that that, you know, that it must be, if we are going to have reimbursable activities, they should be identified, just like we have identified what we can use the 3% CA monies for. But that's just the thought. Do we have any agreements where there are reimbursable activities? No, but typically, typically comes up in the context of rationalizing the need for a financial partnership that we've got exorbitant infrastructure costs. So that's usually the threshold rationale or argument as to why they need support. But I, I'm not aware of any current agreement that we have uh, specific reimbursable activities. So I guess I can think of an example now where <clears throat> with the Downs CEA, um, in order to qualify for, I think it's their uh, bonus at the end, mm -hmm. there has to be infrastructure sufficient to support the downtown that we define. Mm -hmm. So I think that would kind of fit. It's not really reimbursable, it's a performance. I guess that's a performance measure. Yeah, we, and other performance measures on that deal have to do with uh, square footage of non residential build out. Again, those were things that were really important to us and that we wanted to make sure that they were hitting these milestones. And if they didn't, there was a consequence of not doing it. So again, why? <clears throat> I'd almost be comfortable striking it, uh, that first part, and just sticking with the 
term shall have performance measures. But I don't think that would preclude you from doing a reimbursable activity if it made sense, but I can't think of one off the top of my head that we would want to do. Do, do you happen to remember? I know you pulled some different policies together. Was this from another policy? Yep, this would have come out of, um, I feel fairly confident that this, this particular bullet would have come out of Freeport's. I, I am happy to just delete that part out. Works for me. Can we take another five-minute break? Yeah, sure. Sorry. Sure. I know we only been here an hour. Well, and also, <laughs> just as a, we do have a round table that starts at six, and we do have staff that needs to set up the space to make okay, that. Okay, so what time would you be out here? I, it would be really great if we could be out of here absolutely no later than 5.30. Okay. Drop date. Right back. I know. Okay. Yep. Five minutes. Okay. Wow, she's, I don't know, do you want to try to articulate to, to Larissa what you're thinking about as potential, the concern that you had that wasn't addressed in this policy and see if there's a way that they can. So what I, I feel like it was missing a section on strategy. Um, Portland, I think, did a pretty good job where it, uh, I feel like TIFFs, it can be good or bad. It's an opportunity, right? It's a, it's a tool that we have. and. Um, I feel like that's not it's not conveyed all that well here, but okay. why we would want to uh, establish TIF districts and CEAs for that matter as well. Um, but I didn't want to get to the point of rewriting the document. Uh, so would that be added to the purpose section? <coughs> Maybe the two of you could work on something and just get it to Betsy and I, and we could. I, I you know, once, you, yeah. once you both are comfortable with the proposed language, sure. just get it to us so we can kind of do it off cycle. And sure. It. Yeah. So, the, I mean, the, the more I read Portland's um, <clears throat> TIFF report, I, that's where those ideas came from. So I, I feel like they're being a little more strategic about their use of TIFFs in particular. They're, they're not heavy users of CEAs, but. Um, for TIFFs, I feel like they're they're smart. If they know a big project's coming down, they'll redraw the lines of an existing TIF or find a way to, to fit it into a TIF. And there's good there's there's valid reasons to do that. I think they outline them in their policy a little bit. And okay. That's maybe we'll be able to steal a piece. Sure. So I've been sending you around. Um, <clears throat> you, you can take a break. You're telling me. What? <laughs> no, no, we cut the no, no. <laughs> They want us up by 5:30, so we were trying to. Both of you wanted a piece a little bit addressed about what else might should be in the policy. I was going to get suggested some language around the strategy and why what we're trying to achieve. And I think Larissa and John will work on something somewhat modeled after what Portland did and then share it with the both of us and mm -hmm. see if we can incorporate it in and mm -hmm. so we don't have to come back together for a right. Yes, do we think Betsy may have had a point? Let me speak to my point. No. Well, um, so, yeah, I, I would like to just put in um, like a, a point system, a positive and a negative point system of, you know, how, so we've got at the back, if you look at the, uh, the last pieces, um, we've got a big thing that says TIF policies to be met, the value proposed, public infrastructure, the public infrastructure value. So there's a lot of things to be, to be filled out here, but I'd like, to, I'd like to, so those are just anecdotal, but I'd like to add a point system to that. We actually have a um, point system on the web for affordable housing RFPs um, that, you know, it has to meet this criteria, this criteria, et cetera. Um, and I had found, um, I'm not saying this is necessarily the one, but, you know, something like this. So it would be a little more, um, uh, I think I, Less subjective, more objective. Yeah, well, it's always going to be subjective, but anytime you can add an objective measure around subjective data, sometimes it gives you a point scale to compare things. I think, you know, to, um, to John's point, you know, at this point, it's just kind of like, oh, you know, why not apply for a C? <laughs> it's like, I, I don't know that we've, 
you know, put right. parameters around it to say, you know, look, if you want to go through this whole, if you want to get through this, all the steps, the seven steps, it's going to have to be pretty significant to come to the council. Um, so, uh, so there was that, a point scale that way, and then uh, for a positive impact on the town, and then a, a point scale for a negative impact on the town. So you'd have to have a low score on that and a high score on positive. You'd have to have a high score on positive impact and you'd have to have a low score on negative impact in order to take, in order for the project to go through the, the process. And I, uh, second of all, I'd like to just apologize because I don't have this flushed out. So I was not nearly as prepared today as I wanted to be for this. Um, and so I apologize to you guys and to you guys for that. Anybody watching for the uh, people of Scarborough, um, but, um, I do think we need to put some parameters around how it's going to get through these steps. So maybe, same point, it, it, if you want to work with the rest of it, see if there's potential there. Yeah. Because um, a lot of it's in here already. I just, I just think we might want to do something that puts a little objectivity around it. So maybe, yeah, as a true takeaway, is you'll work with the rest of sort of your piece. Maybe that's how you can try to get mm -hmm. something for us and see if it's workable, mm -hmm. and then get it to all of us. Would Betsy would a launch point for that be the threshold requirements for credit enhancement agreements that is that makes up section three? Are you looking to add a, a, apply a point system to those threshold requirements? Yes. Okay. So you can. This is, the content is not right, but it's just an example. So if those parameters, negative and positive, are created, I presume then there's some benchmark with each that you must rate above a certain rating to qualify? Yes, yeah, my thought on that would be that that would set, that would be set yearly. Um, by the town, the current, the current town council. So you would set that based on, you know, current economic, um, so maybe it would come through the finance committee, they would, advi they would advise a threshold score, threshold scores for what would be considered for the upcoming year. The town council would vote on that and then that would set it for a year or. The, the way I'm kind of thinking about this is, like when we come up with the ordinances, they're guidelines for the planning department. Or, or or planning board to follow. You're kind of taking it a step further, kind of, you know, if we're going to take some of this out of our span of control, the council, and have staff and commissions or uh, committees work it, we're giving them criteria that, to manage it. Or it's a start in that direction anyways. So I do, I, I'm okay with flushing out the idea, see if it makes sense. Okay. And then, for me getting back, so you're on three, which is a criteria. A couple of questions for that. The way it reads right now is we've got a bunch of criteria set out, but the way it reads is that they only had to satisfy one or more of the following, and they're pretty broad. I mean, you could drive almost anything that would qualify under the bullet. The development project must be consistent with the Scarboroughs. So can we, is there any appetite? I mean, shouldn't they satisfy all of these criteria? Or can we make our, I guess it's, it, I'm asking my peers whether it seems like one out of these, these criteria is a pretty low bar. I mean, there's almost every single possible CEA. But if we gonna, do the point system based something we're around on this. You, you might flush some of it out with that. So that it, it would be, you have to, would, the point system would mean, mean, it has to be more than just one. If, to get to the threshold? Yeah. All right, so, so, okay, so we'll, we'll see where that goes and see. The only other thing on that that I had a question about, though, is that because it, it's still fresh, is the financial need need to offset costs to the development project or site is extraordinary. How are we, do we going to, what, how do we define extraordinary costs? I mean, that, that's pretty broad, right? I think that the, the phrase extraordinary cost was used quite a bit with the um, Downs project. Yeah, that was one of the things, and I think also with the Cabela's project, when we think about um, the extraordinary cost of improving the intersection, 
in order to make that development possible that the developer took on. So they took on $12.5 million in cost to improve the intersection. The credit enhancement agreement re reimburses to them $8.25 million of that twelve point five they took on. So I think that we do not have a destination for extraordinary cost, um, but I think that the what I have understood it to mean is that there was some high level of initial output from an infrastructure standpoint that the developer needed to put forward in order to bring the development online that was going to be um, above and beyond the cost of the, the development itself. So this one, if you look, so they do say extraordinary, presence of extraordinary development, redevelopment costs such as remodeling, rehabilitation, demolition, environmental remediation, capital purchases, facility expansion, public infrastructure, and then you give a, a point scale. I'd, I'd be fine if what you're suggesting is that the definition of extraordinary would be built into using those criteria that are put forth there. So, yeah. I mean, that's all I'm trying right. to get. I just think we need to right. have some way, and I mean, part of my frustration was with that is that we hear those words, but we haven't, it was really difficult getting the exact listing of what is extraordinary and what wasn't. Um, and it's really difficult to say, okay, these were the extraordinary costs that we explicitly built into the CEA. What were those costs that you actually incurred for those? So uh, to me, that's just really broad, and I'd like to see that. And I guess that, that, that is followed up by the disclaimer we have at the very end saying, you know, there's non-disclosure agreements and we can't really use this. I mean, I, that, that to me is a problem. If we're going to give millions of dollars for extraordinary costs, there, I, I would like to see some language in there. There's, there's a definition of what those are up front and then some accounting for it on the back end. Well, <laughs> so some other CAs, uh, policies, probably not the ones you looked at, I guess there were some interesting things that definitely meant that there would have to be more data um, released because there was um, a specification for um, reasonable return on investment by the developers. So, um, so in order to determine that, you had to get some kind of numbers um, to say that you, know, you can't be making 100% profit or something like that. I personally wouldn't want to go there, but. I hear what you're saying. It would be, be good to be able to get more information than we get today, but not to get in the middle of someone's business. I, I wonder if the top census covers what you're talking about, though, where the um, uh, such justification is demonstrated. I guess. Uh, or actually before that. Applicants for credit enhancement agreement should demonstrate that the town of Scarborough's participation is economically necessary in order to undertake the project. So where you didn't, you may not have gotten that before, Yeah. I feel like this is actually burdens on you to show us that, you know, assuming we're not doing it for our own purposes. But it, Peter, would you be satisfied by using the language that's in the, that language similar to what Betsy has provided that's shown here. So extraordinary costs include costs associated with, I can colon yeah. and insert yeah. bullets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's, you were on to a different point, right? Well, that, that, that solves that point. Okay. And then, and then the, ne the next point is I just wanted to get clear about, um, I mean, that's been a frustration. It is that balance between how can we get enough information so we look at some of the information, we're not doing it to try to create a competitive or disadvantage. But at the same time, there has to be ways, especially if it's gonna be a public referendum, that we have some information we can share with the public so they understand if it is an extraordinary amount of money we're talking about, what, what sort of the criteria are. Um, so I don't, I don't know, I, I guess I don't have a specific all such information shall be kept confidential in the bounds of state laws governing public documents. What does that mean, Tom? Does that mean if we have it in-house, we have to share it? No, there are certain exclusions under state law that we would protect it. It, it, it does not, uh, it's not deemed a public record. So under the FOIA laws, there are certain things that we can and would protect under state law. Because it goes on to say, when necessary, the town may request that the applicant must provide cost information, which 
cost of infrastructure, sewer, waters, et cetera, which is what we wanted to see um, via confidentiality and non-disclosure agreements to be, ex it, that almost says like that is a, that every one of those sharing that cost information would be subject to non-disclosure. Is, is that what that I thought it was just a willingness, maybe it's just poorly worded. It was a willingness to say, if we need to, we'll sign this for purposes of getting access to the information we need. I guess, so I guess I might be more comfortable with if we just, that would suggest to me that we are going to do that every time. I, I would maybe not necessarily like to plant that seed. If they're willing to share, that's great. If the only way we can get it is by a confidentiality, then that can be a individual conversation each time. Uh, anybody else have any issues with it? Any thoughts? I'm not sure why we need all such information shall be kept confidential within the bounds of state laws governing public documents. I, if there's laws that bound the pub, pub, public documents, then why do we even need that sentence? I'll just strike it. Any thoughts? Any Still thinking. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it is kind of maybe a little too broad that all information will be, um, you know, maybe requested information will be uh, kept confidential within the bounds of state law. Uh, I'd be okay with that. I need some guidance about what you would like me to do. I'm well, two different things. Here, it's trying to be able to get more information that can be shared, that can reasonably be shared, right? Um, maybe it just, it, it, maybe it's just the one bullet. When necessary, the town may request and the applicant must provide cost information, i.e. cost infrastructure, sewers, utilities, and it will be confident, kept confidential within the bounds of state law. And if that accomplishes can you say that again? <laughs> I think rearrange the words of the sentence so that it reads, when necessary, the town may request and the applicant must provide cost information, i.e. or e.g. cost of infrastructure, sewer, utilities. All such information shall be confidential within the bounds of state laws governing the public documents. And strike via confidentiality. Yeah, yeah I could just take that out because they'll demand that each and every time and we'll be just left with the same language. Yeah, and if there's something they don't want to disclose, they're going to ask for a confidential and then, then we might have agreement to, anyway. Within the bounds okay. of state laws governing. Yep, that makes sense. I'm sorry, tell me I'm having a hard time. Within the laws governing public documents. question I just had is right after that there's another bullet that says the one of the criteria is the project creates a significant number and or type of high wage level of jobs why is that why is that is that a state criteria I mean why do we why are we specifying high level jobs rather than jobs okay. and the high the high level I don't think is a state requirement there, there are forms that the applicant must, uh, and Wax is doing it, uh, yeah. must file with the state regarding job creation. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's a big policy objective of the, the state law, and yeah. I, yeah. arguably it's an important one to us, too. I think that this is actually language that um, former Councillor Donovan and I worked on together. I think that the idea was that, um, while certainly all jobs create value for the person that does them and for the person that receives the benefit of the person doing that job, that if um, if the basis for requesting a credit enhancement agreement is on job creation, that it is in the best interest of the community to have jobs that are livable wage jobs, for instance, that this, this would um, deter um, maybe a large retailer who's offering jobs at minimum wage from saying that job creation is the reason that a credit enhancement agreement is um, reasonable to ask for since as a community, people earning minimum wage is not actually 
it's not, it's not a livable wage, so it's not actually in the community's best interest to um, subsidize creation of minimum wage jobs. So maybe um, I, I would propose like the threshold requirements and the, le the level of municipal participation could potentially be worked into the, the scoring system. Say that again, the, the do what? The, the threshold requirements and the level of municipal participation uh -huh. could be worked into the the criteria, the score criteria, because a lot of these are are really value, are trying to devalue, value what, um, you know, so the development project brings a significant new business to the community, which results in net new jobs to the region. And then we say up there, the project creates a significant number or type of high level wage jobs. So I think, you know, somewhere we could, on the point scale, talk about jobs um, and then rank that, right, on a point scale how well that project is meeting that criteria. Am I totally off base? You guys looking at me like I'm... I'm, I'm not trying to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, so I'm kind of picturing, so let's say you score a 50, then you might qualify for 25%. Are you, are you kind of picturing that kind of scale? No, no, this no. is just a cri This is just threshold requirements. Just to get through. And yeah, yeah, right? So I like this one is proposed employment potential, number of new employees, skill, you know, range of one to 10, you know, what, so, I, you know, I don't know. I think, again, trying to put, how are we even gonna judge all of these? You know, some of them are gonna be subjective. So mm -hmm. I, I just, I kind of feel like these two sections are. Intertwined. Yeah, yeah, intertwined. But I was just, I mean, you guys, I mean, just, it, it just struck me the way it reads though. We're only interested in high wage level of jobs, is that? I understand. I, the, I understand the reasoning, but think about hot, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to discount any job, but you know, a, a, a hotel project uh, that has three hundred jobs, two hundred and seventy-five of which are service, you know, minimum wage level, yeah. as opposed to uh, you know, office use that has higher than average wages. One seems better than another to me, but that's subjective. Right, but if you if you were judging on a point scale, proposed employment potential, you might rate one higher than the other. Higher than the other. Yeah. So you might give a five on a scale of one to ten, or you might say, hey, you know, Wex is a ten out of ten, maybe a ten. So Mr. Chairman, it occurs to me that this is not ready to be sent to council. Um, <laughs> you know, if I appreciate the, the effort that the three of you put forward. You're gonna have four more voices, two of whom are seeing it for the first time. Right. I, I really think we need to avoid a, uh, a difficult meeting with council. So I think this needs to be worked on further, in my opinion, before it sees the light of day. Yeah, I mean, I think that was the, the intent. The, okay. I mean, all we're trying to do is get a another draft a to kind of, okay. yeah. another draft to work through, so okay. I think. Yeah, I don't think I don't think from here it can go to the the next town council meeting. I think it's supposed to be worked. Right. Yeah, it's actively being worked. If it's asked a little later on tonight. Yeah. It's, I mean, and it's close. I think. <coughs> and then we do work it. Maybe one more finance committee meeting and be able to. So I think does anybody else have anything else that comes? So I think with you two working together and. I think you've got some great suggestions about how maybe to weave some of that into the, the, the point system that, mm -hmm. so job creation, it can be somewhat dependent on, on that. I think that gives us a framework to bring it, to bring it forward. Yeah, the, uh, well, I guess the only other comment that I'll have is uh, when I looked at Portland, I felt like they had a good monitoring system in place. There's a report that covers their economic development office, covers all of the TIFs and reports out on how they're performing. If yeah, they're performing they or not, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that might be something that we want to try to integrate as well. Yeah. So. You volunteer into it? I'll give some thought to that. Okay. Yeah. I think it's yeah. along the lines of what I Yeah, that would be great. I think having that annual report out about how they're doing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we've got several that are out there that we don't have necessarily. Well, we have to search a bunch of different documents to try to figure out what. Uh, yeah. 
you. The initial presentation of this to the for, to the Rules and Policies Committee when it was first presented, part of the presentation included um, port, um, printouts of Portland's website as well as the report that you're discussing and a suggestion that if this policy were adopted, that it would be accompanied by a section on our website that would have um, basically a, a page that was for TIFFs, and you could go and you could click and you could see where each of them stood, and then there would also be that report that Portland had. That and was, that got canned? No. Oh. That got <coughs> said, okay, well, let's get through this, knowing that those are on the table for if we get this passed and we can move forward at that okay. point. But is there a way in the redraft that you can incorporate that into this, suggesting that there will be that? I'm sure John and I can come up with excellent language to make that happen. Okay. All right. So with that, um, given Tom's comment, yes, we'll rework this again. Maybe we can target the end of March for getting closer. I mean, we've got, so anyway, we'll, we'll come back to that. The, the, our next meeting is the 26th, right? And so that's our, is, is can part, will this be available to come back by the 26th or we got it? Depending on the availability of Councilors Clucci and yeah. Gleistein, yes. Okay. I can definitely do it. I'm going out of town after um, the beginning of March, so I would like to get it done before, so work for me. So that would give us... My day is wide open tomorrow, guys. <laughs> awesome. So with that, so again, the next meeting is Wednesday, February 26th in Chambers at 5.30. Um, we will come up with an agenda, and then item six on the agenda, I know you want us out of here in five minutes, public comment. And anybody have any public comment this evening? No? So I guess with that, either of you have any comments, suggestions? No, when, when's the, uh, do we have a calendar for the you know, budget kickoff and process? Good question. We do. Um, we can put that on your agenda. We can review that. Okay. That's yeah, we've collaborated with our school colleagues and, and have a schedule. Cool. What's, what uh, is a point of some discussion, I think, among the Finance Committee is how you wish to actually do your review of the budget. It's been done differently. And so it really is to Did satisfy your needs. Yep. And are we still going to have a joint finance committee with the school? Is that planned? Yeah, that's, that's built into the, the schedule. Program. That's built into that. Is. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, that so next uh, that's a great suggestion. The next twenty six, we'll see the calendar and talk a little bit about how we want to approach it. The it must be coming up soon. Uh, it's the first week of April, April, which is the general time frame that it's presented, and then you essentially have it for the next six weeks. April through early May. Colette has it. And, um, I think I circulated to Peter. Um, I'm pleased to circulate it to all of you in advance of that meeting, but we could spend uh, uh, just a short bit at, at that meeting yeah. on the 26th and review it. Okay. I'm with you. That would have already started by now. <laughs> I'm sure it has, but just not for us. Right, yeah. oh, not effort, yeah. yeah. I mean, you got sure the budget right. last Friday, Tom? First drafts? Uh, it's Friday? actually, no, I had the date wrong. They're still, they're in. Still at uh, department Still stage development. Um, essentially, it's the end of this month. I had the month of March with it, and it's presented the first week of April. Yeah. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thank Thanks you, guys. guys. Thanks for Three your patience. Three minutes to spare. What's that? Yeah, a couple of minutes to spare. Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Yeah, thank you. You're staying, right? You oh, yes, I'm staying. How do you want this set up? Uh, this is going to become a table for 20. Oh, you have? You were prepared. Yep. Good and then